What is up, everybody? It's Brother Jeremiah. God bless you. So glad to come to, you, come to you with a brand new video this week. And the reason I'm laughing is because there, there's some of you out there who may have never gone across this uh, passage of Scripture. But those of you who grew up in a Christian house or went to any type of Christian camp or Bible school, you know exactly where I'm going and as soon as I say the scripture reference, you're going to be like, oh, we're not talking about this art, but today we're going to be talking about how to walk in love at a higher level. So my passage of scripture I'm going to be reading from is 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm going to start right at verse 1. Uh, I'm going to be reading this out of the message translation that's on the Bible app. Uh, so... If you have the YouVersion Bible app, it's right there. You'll be able to read it exactly the way I have it. So you'll be able to see that I'm not just interjecting my own words or trying to put my own spin on anything. This is exactly the way the scripture reads. Any translation you read it in, it's going to be the same. But let me read the scripture and then we'll get into it. So 1 Corinthians, again, chapter 13, starting in verse 1. It says, If I speak with human eloquence... In angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't have love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So, no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. And then it goes on to talk about what love is, what love looks like. It says, love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, <laughs> this is what I'm still working on, guys. Doesn't fly off the handle. Doesn't keep score of the sins of others. Doesn't revel when others grovel. Takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. Puts up with anything. Trusts God always. Always looks for the best. Never looks back, but keeps on going to the end. Love never dies. And so... We have it. This is telling you straight up to walk in love the way that God says love is, what God says love is, how God loves. It's saying this is the way that it is. So what I really wanted to hit at and, uh, you know, and talk about is how to walk in the love of God to another level. Now, you may say, Brother Jeremiah, um, I've read... 1 Corinthians 13, thousands of times. Uh, how can I go to yet another level in love? And so the other day I, I was thinking on this and meditating on it because, like I said, this is something we're all going to work on for the rest of our lives. We're all going to learn how to perfect our love walk. Why? Because in the Word it says that faith only works by love. That's how it works. Faith only works by love. So your level of faith or how much you can believe in what God says, what you can attain by faith is only going to grow equally proportionate to your love walk. The more that you love, the more you can see God's power manifested in your life. The more that you love, the more you can see favor increase in your life. The more that you walk in love, the more peace you'll have personally, at least for the aspect of you not being upset or agitated or aggravated all the time. Now, I'm, I'm not saying any of these things are easy, because if they were, God wouldn't have had to put it in the Bible to tell us, this is what you do. This is how you walk. Don't, don't strut. Don't keep record of people's wrongdoings. And so... I wanted to share something very practical that I've I've been doing in my life that helps me to walk in love. And as I perfect it and as I grow that muscle, so to speak, to uh, be able to love uh, unconditionally, it gets easier and easier. I see fruit in my life from me being able to walk in love at a higher degree. 
uh, with with what the Lord showed me to do. So the way the, that the Lord helped me to understand how to walk in a higher level of love is simply this. And I, I want you to close your eyes for this part. And maybe you guys aren't even uh, watching the screen. Maybe you're just listening to my audio. But listen to me right here. This is, this is what I want you to do, okay? When it comes to learning how to walk in love, I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think of somebody in your life that can do no wrong. Somebody in your life that you look to as an example. Somebody in your life that even if you tried to get mad at them, there's there's no way you can. You may say, man, Jeremiah, I wish I had one example, but there's nobody in my life like that. So then what I want you to do, if you don't have somebody in your life who's like that, that you can think of, think of the person that you would go out of your way for. If they called you at two in the morning and said, man, I, I really need some help. Something's going on. Who would you be right there for? Uh, who's somebody that if you knew they were going through something, you wouldn't even ask them if they wanted the help. You'd jump in to interject and give them help. That's the person I want you thinking of right now. And so I, I have several people in my mind that I, that I feel that way toward, that I love truly unconditionally. They can do no wrong in my eyes. As far as I'm concerned, I would never say a bad thing about them. I'd never think a bad thing about them. And so what I do is I fix my heart on how I love that person. And then when I come across somebody I don't feel that way about, I just extend that kind of love to them. They don't deserve it. They may not ask for it. They may not care if I love them in this way. But according to the scripture, I have to. I have to love them this way. This is the way that I love them, unconditionally. So again, you know, one person I'm thinking of in my life, it just absolutely, I adore who they are. I love who they are. They don't have a mean bone in their body as far as I'm concerned. If somebody told me they did the worst thing in the world, I would never be able to believe it because I love them that much and I see them with such eyes of love that it's unshakable. And so when I go and I apply the love that I have for them to somebody else who may even be acting unlovable, it helps me to get over that hump because I have to remember that the word of God also says that, you know, God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't pick and choose who he loves. He loves everyone. That's what John 3.16 says. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that none should perish, but that all should have everlasting life. God doesn't pick and choose. And so if I want to be more like God, if I want to be more Christ-like, I have to come to the place where not only can I learn to love others just as much as I love someone else in my life who means a lot to me, I have to get that way with anyone I come across, no matter who it is. I'm going to give you an example, and then I'm going to be done with this, because there, there's really not a whole lot you can say on this. I mean, really, the biggest part of you learning how to walk in love is just you putting it into practice. So, for an example, I've, I've had people before in the past that, um, you know, I've had to work on different projects with. Um, you know, the, these types of people, they can... This one person I'm thinking of in particular, I'm not going to name them because that's not what this is about, but... Man, I just really got to the point where everything they seemed to do just irked me. And I was they could do no right in my eyes. And I'd have to think of different things that were coming up even, even months ahead of where we're going to be having an event or something we have to do. And I know I'm going to be working with this person. And I'd be so anxious about how their behavior was going to be and how they would act. And this, this one day, the Lord really arrested my heart and was like, hey, you cannot be like that. And I was like, be like what? you know, playing dumb, but I already knew. Because when the Holy Ghost talks to you, he already knows that you've picked up on something in your heart. He's a gentleman. When you're ready to address it and you have a teachable nature, the Holy Spirit can help to hit at what's gone wrong, help to fill in a pothole in your life and in your heart, so to speak. And so I said, well, what are you talking about? And, and the Lord's like, hey, you're being really hard-hearted towards this person. What I want you to do is I want you to extend the love to them that you have for one of your best friends in the ministry that can do no wrong in your eyes. And I'm like, no, I, I can't do that. 
why would I ever do that? This other person, they don't act like them. They don't have a heart like that. They're not selfish like that. They're not always boastful like that. And the Lord says, yeah, I know, but I didn't ask you to love them conditionally. I ask you to love unconditionally. I'm giving you an example of a person in your life that you love unconditionally. All I'm asking you to do is treat this other person the same way you treat the one you love. And it really got to me and I'm like, okay, so I tried it. You know, walking through that person, just, okay, I'm not gonna get aggravated. They are the way that they are, man. It, and I'm not gonna say this was like overnight. I was like, yeah, I love everybody. No, I'm talking like a year straight to get to where I'm no longer annoyed. Year two of doing this, they no longer irk me. Year three of doing this, uh, I no longer get nervous about being in their presence. I'm, I'm actually having a good time and, you know, be, you know, being more empathetic and compassionate towards this person. Year four, we go on and on and on. And as time's progressed, I get to the point where I enjoy seeing this person you know, even if they do something irksome, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't stay in my heart. It doesn't stay in my mind. I can move past it and not allow myself to get fixated on it. I no longer try to put an anchor in what they've done. I let it go. And, and it's completely changed my life. And so, you know, this is just the approach that I take now. Anybody, with everybody, I give them the same love I would give any person in my life that I love unconditionally. And again, this is not an easy thing to pick up. It's going to take time. It's going to take practice. It's going to take effort. But I'm telling you, it's worth it. It's worth it again, not only for the good that you personally can spread, and not only for the good that you can sow into the lives of those around you, but it's good for your soul, man. It, it keeps you from getting bogged down with the weight of life. It keeps you from having anxiety and, and mental stress that can come from being worrisome about all these things. So just remember, uh, it, you know, let me give you three things like I always do to do to really, really set this in. How do you get locked into this? Well, I'm, I'm glad you asked. Number one, read through 1 Corinthians 13. As often as you want to remember how to walk in love, just go back. That's why there's this word. That's why it's in the Bible, so you can go back to it. So first, read 1 Corinthians 13. And anytime you think you've got it, go ahead and read it again. Once you know you've got it, keep reading it and then read it twice as much because then they'll try to come these attacks against what you've learned and you need to be strong. Uh, so number one, read 1 Corinthians 13. Number two... And I tell you this almost every time I make a video, but it's so important. Pray in the Spirit. When you pray in the Spirit, it builds you up. It builds up the real you. It builds up the Spirit part of you that needs to be in charge of your life. You can't have a life where you just go doing what your body wants to do. You can't even have a life going what your soul wants to do, which is your mind, will, and emotions. But I'm going to talk about that in another video. But then the real you... The part of you that lives eternally is your spirit. That's the part of you that's saved when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And that's the one that has to be in charge of your life. Your spirit man has to be top dog. And so when you pray in the spirit, you, you put the captain back at the helm of the ship where he's supposed to be. So your feelings aren't taking you to and fro everywhere. So number one, read 1 Corinthians 13 as much as you can. Number two, pray in the Spirit. And number three, and this is a big one, proactively find the people in your life that annoy you the most and extend the most love towards them at random. What do I mean? Find that person in your contacts list that you're like, if, it, if they were on fire, I wouldn't put them out with my drink. Find that person in your contacts list and send them a message today. I love you. I'm praying for you. Keep going. You're going to make it. It doesn't have to be long. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be you telling them how annoying they are in your life. But I'm going to try to walk in love with you. They don't need to know any of that. Most of these people that irk you are not aware that they irk you. Why? Because it's something you're seeing and something you're reacting to. So find the people. Get proactive. Sow this seed. Find those people that you know need you to love them at a higher level and just do it. Make the decision to do it. 
So let me recap for you. Number one, read 1 Corinthians 13 as much as you can. Number two, pray in the Spirit. And number three, go out of your way to love the people in your life that are unlovable. And I, I want to I wanna just camp on that last part. You may say, man, they hurt me. They did something awful to me. I, it really messed my life up. I know. I know. And it happens. And I've walked through this with other people who've done the same thing to me. But, you know, the Word of God says that it's not even me who lives anymore. When I become a new creation in Christ, Christ lives his life through me. So no matter how you feel and no matter what you've been through, like it or not, when you receive Jesus as your Lord, you have to let him live his life through you. And God is love. Jesus is love manifested. No matter what somebody does, no matter how they make you feel, you have to be Jesus for that person. Now you're saying, Jeremiah, you're saying you're Jesus. No, I'm not saying that. You have to exemplify a Christ-like nature because you can't come to Jesus and not be changed. It doesn't work that way. So God bless you. I, I hope this helped to bring you some peace, uh, bring you some wisdom on how to love at a different level. We all need it. We're at a time and point right now in history where the next world war that's going to be fought is going to be the war of love over hate. That's what it's going to be. It's not going to be nuclear. It's not going to be physical. It's not going to be violent. It's going to be spiritual. It's always spiritual. And the way you overcome any hatred operating in the world, you counter it with the love of God. And with that, I want to say I love you. Thank you so much for watching. I pray you've been blessed. If you have, feel free to like, share, and subscribe uh, to my channel. And you'll be able to hear many more uplifting messages like this every single week. So thanks again for watching. I hope you have a coffee or something. If you don't like coffee, I'll pray for you. But I'll see you next time. And hey, uh, enjoy the big game tomorrow. I hope whoever you're rooting for wins. But for some of you, you're not going to win. But it's okay. You can walk in love towards the other team. All right. God bless you. I'm going to hit stop now. Bye-bye.